Hey there, art nerds. So today we have the second part of the pancake paper child tutorial. This is where we're assembling our pancake or our Christmas cat watercolor into a 2.5D posable paper figurine. This is a pretty easy paper craft utilizing a lot of the same materials and techniques that I talked about in other tutorials in this Advent series. Speaking of Advent series, every day from December 12th to December 25th, I am releasing a new paper child. So that includes the printable line art, the printable colored illustration that you guys can print out, two tutorials, and I think that's actually about it. So every day there is a new one. So I hope you guys will check back and I hope you guys will check out some of the other ones that I've released. The line arts and the colored printables are all free. It's my Christmas present to you guys. So if you missed part one, it went live at 10 this morning. I'll link it down in the description below as well as in the comments. And you can find the printable line art and the printable full colored watercolor illustration down in the description below as well. If you are working along with me today and you're working from a printout, I would recommend you print it out on a cardstock or another heavy paper. The paper rigidity is going to give this paper child some of the stability that it's going to need to be able to stand up. So the other materials that you're going to need for this are of course scissors, maybe an X-Acto blade, double-sided tape, single-sided tape, possibly even foam tape, and popsicle sticks. And you can get, not popsicle sticks, sorry, foam tape as well. You are going to need popsicle sticks, of course. Uh, most of these are materials you can find down at your local Dollar Tree or your local Walmart if you don't happen to have them handy. You're also going to want to keep the scrap paper from this because we're going to use that to build the base a little bit later on. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm removing some of the excess paper. And since I want long straight cuts, we're going to use that to build the triangular base a little bit later on. I'm using a paper cutter to help me out. You don't have to use a paper cutter if you don't have one, but if you have one, they sure are handy. Speaking of handy, if you have a Cricut or another die cutting machine, you might want to use that to do your cutting so you're not cutting it all by hand. This is a great activity for a younger artist to work on with someone older. The younger artist can handle the coloring and the older person can handle the cutting. But if you are cutting this out on your own and you're not good at what's known as fussy cutting, that's where we cut right on the outline. It's really tedious and it's a little bit tricky to do you can do what's known as a halo cut where you just kind of cut around the image leaving a rim of white paper. In some of my other paper child tutorials that I've done earlier in the year, I did the halo cut and it actually adds to the stability so you're not gonna have so many little unsupported fiddly bits and it's way easier on the hands. And honestly, it's not that noticeable. I have loads of photos where I have a halo cut around my paper child and you would hardly even notice them. So, but today I'm going to be doing some fussy cutting. I'm using an X-Acto blade to get in there and get all the really fine, weird, difficult to get cuts. If you have a really nice pair of small, sharp scissors, those would be beautiful for this. Mine that I got at Michael's and are intended for embroidery are absolutely awful. <laughs> so I would be using the little fine scissors for this rather than an X-Acto blade, but mine are really, really, really bad. So this little cutie who has gotten into the tinsel and yanked it down from the tree is Pancake. He is the kitten from my comic 7-inch Kara. 7-inch Kara is a really cute watercolor comic about a 7-inch tall girl named Kara who befriends a human teenager and her pet kitten Pancake. And you guys can read the first seven chapters for free at 7inchkara.com. Or if you're more of a physical book person like me, you can buy the first volume and pre-order the second volume through my online shop. And I'll make sure to link both of those down in the description below. They're great if you love picture books, if you love tiny people things, or if you enjoy comics. So now that I've gone in and done some of the fussy cutting, I'm gonna use my scissors to just continue the job and remove the bulk of the paper. And I'm setting a lot of this paper aside because I may need to use it in later portions of either this tutorial or some of the upcoming paper child tutorials. Remember, we've got a new one going live every day from December 12th to December 25th. That includes Christmas Day, so check back often. And this is a great activity to do if you're home from school or if you're homeschooled or if it's a snow day and you can't go out and play 
or if you're staying home and trying to stay safe and healthy. And I would love to see what you guys make. You totally do not have to color them the way I colored them. You can color this to look like your cat if you want to. I would love to see it. So if you take photos and post them anywhere, tag me at N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, Natto Soup, so I can see what you've made. It really means the world to me, and I created these activities to entertain other people and help them feel a little bit less lonely. And knowing that you guys are making these activities would just really brighten my day. cutting this out is really tedious. This could be a really good one for you to color and then you just hand it off to someone else and say, hey, can you cut it for me, please? I don't have anyone who's willing to cut it out for me, so I had to cut it out all myself. And this is a good opportunity to mention that I have time-lapsed various segments of this video at different speeds. So if you don't cut this fast, don't worry, neither do I. All right, so now we're gonna take our two-dimensional art into the 2.5D world with a little bit of clever paper engineering. So these are the materials that I'm going to be using. You can see my box of paper scraps and I'm going to use a really substantial paper scrap from an earlier tutorial. I'm going to cut that down into two equally width uh, rectangles. So these rectangles go the length of the page. So that would be 12 inches long by about an inch and a half. And I am trying to fold them in such a way that they can basically be joined together. So I folded them almost in half with one end being about an inch longer than the other end. And then I folded that end over so we get two almost complete triangles. You guys see that here? And we're going to assemble these almost triangles into one really stable triangle using some of our double stick tape magic. So on the slightly smaller one, I put my double stick tape on the outside and I stuck the other one on the bottom of that. Then I am securing our little overage flap, folding it over, making sure that everything kind of lines up. And we're gonna end up with a triangular base using a little bit of double stick tape here to get it to all stick together. And then later I'm gonna use some single sided tape just to secure it to make sure it doesn't come apart. I live in a really humid area of the US. I live in Southeast Louisiana and humidity definitely does some funny things to these paper children, things that I never had problems with when I lived in Nashville. So you may wanna go the extra mile and just extra engineer your paper children so that they actually stand up. All right, so we've got the base of our base made but we need to extend it a bit. So I'm taking another scrap of watercolor paper and I'm gonna use that to make a slightly larger base. Now if you want to, you can color this, you can watercolor it to look like your floor or to look like the presents you have. You don't have to leave it just white. I left it just white because I'd rather put things in front of my paper child to hide them. So we have made a base extension and that's going to allow us to attach the paper child we've made, our little pancake here, and he will sit evenly. So I need to make a bottom for my triangular base. So I grabbed another scrap of watercolor paper. I traced my base and I'm gonna tape that on using the single sided tape. And I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom in a couple of spots and then loop that piece onto our existing triangular base. And you guys count how many times I end up saying base in this video. I feel like saying all your base. <laughs> I'm also gonna tape it on the inside. This is a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure that your tape actually hits all the surfaces on the inside of your triangular base. But that's gonna make it nice and sturdy. Now, if you don't have clear single-sided tape, you can also use 
masking tape for this. It'll work or washi tape for this if you want to. So now that we have our base built, let's make a spine for pancakes. So I'm cutting another long piece of scrap watercolor paper. You can use either a tape runner or double-sided tape for this. I'm gonna use a tape runner. It's a little bit more economical in this instance. And I'm just applying it liberally to the back of my watercolor rectangle. And I'm gonna press down firmly so that it really adheres. And I'm gonna use a couple of popsicle sticks that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna attach those to the back to give even more support. I'm also going to put a popsicle stick in Pancake's tail. So I'm using the double-sided tape for this. And some of you guys are probably wondering why I'm not using glue. Well, if you have a fast drying glue that has kind of like an alcohol solvent that speeds up the dry time, like rubber cement, that would work great for this. But if you're using a water-based glue, then it's going to add moisture to your paper and it can cause warping. And that's something I want to avoid because these are the original watercolor illustrations for this. And I don't want any warping at all. Working with tape also allows me to work quickly. And tape, I find, actually tends to be a little bit more secure than using glue. Like if I used a glue stick, things that you glue with a glue stick have a tendency to fall apart once the atmosphere of moisture increases. So tape is the way for me. So I am applying some of our foam tape. So this is sticky on both sides, and I got this at Dollar Tree. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make sure that when we attach it to the base, the popsicle sticks don't cause it to adhere unevenly. We can get a good adherence all along the back. And then I'm just going to secure the heckaroony out of this using some of our single-sided clear tape. Now I have the glossy tape because that was what was available at Dollar Tree, but if you use the matte tape, you can also apply it on top of your illustration and it won't be noticeable and it'll add a little extra stability and a little extra security. So now we're basically done. I'm just kind of examining my paper child and looking for any areas that I can add some more tape that I can fix structurally or that didn't really adhere really well and it's gonna need either some of the foam tape or an additional layer of double stick tape. And this is gonna kind of vary person to person just on how careful you were when you were assembling it the first time. Also tape down my popsicle sticks just so that they don't pop off if this thing should warp a little bit. Now we're going to need to make some counterweights to make sure that this thing can stand on its own because it is a little bit front heavy. So I have here some quarters, but you can use any small weight. Some magnets would probably work okay. Some pebbles would work really well. Some seashells, marbles would work. Whatever you have, you can make it work. Uh, and I'm going to tape my little packets of quarters together. I think I have two quarters for each little packet with six, no, sorry, three little packets. So six total quarters. So it'll cost you $1.50 plus the materials to make this if you're using coinage. And this is basically going to offset the weight at the front. So this is going to help it lean back a little bit and stand up on its own. So here's our pancake before we've attached it to the base. You guys can see the spine made of paper and popsicle sticks. Then we have our triangular base with the quarters attached and I use double stick tape to tape my little quarter packets down. And then we have the finished pancake with the materials I used to construct them. You guys are welcome to try whatever you guys have around the house when you're making this. Don't make a special trip out to buy anything. But I use popsicle sticks, double stick tape, scissors, an X-Acto blade for cutting, a tape runner, and some foam tape, as well as some single-sided tape and some scrap watercolor paper. So all that's left is to find the perfect place to put our little pancake. And I thought down among the presents would be the best place. That means I got to crawl on my stomach. And Bowie decided to see what's going on. He was curious about this other cat. 
and I wanted to hide Pancake kind of among the tree branches and among the presents because, hey, you know, my other cat, Remy, loved hiding underneath the Christmas tree and looking up at the Christmas tree lights. And Bowie's such a good helper. He helped me figure out a good place to put it. All right, so here is our pancake paper child. And while I was catching the last bit of video for this, Bowie entered the shot, blocked it with his kitty cat furry booty, and wanted to check out pancakes, see what's going on. So we've got a real Christmas kitty, and then we've got a fake Christmas kitty that we made here today. All right, so I had a blast showing you guys how to paint. Actually, I showed you guys how to draw, paint, and cut out and assemble this paper child. So we've done this one start to finish. I hope you guys will check out those videos as well. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a very happy holidays. Bye guys. Oh, before we go, here are all of the paper children that I have released so far. So we have a tree hanger. We have a light holder. We have someone who perches in your stocking or could be used as a bookmark. We've got two elves to sit on your shelves. We've got an ornament holder who isn't holding her ornament right now. We've got a little candy cane thief making off with a delicious candy cane. And we've got a nutcracker prince. So I hope you guys have enjoyed these tutorials. I hope you guys will keep an eye out for more. Here we have our gingerbread friends. And then finally we have pancakes. So there's still more yet to come. Keep an eye out.